It is election day. Voters are turning out here in Maryland and across the country to cast their votes for president of the United States as well as critical local races. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tim Williams. And I'm Lynn Bowie. It was an historic turnout for early voting. Here in Maryland, more than 2 million people voted early. But if you have not voted yet, you still can because polls are open until 8 o'clock tonight. WJZ is live with team coverage this noon. We start with Amy Kawada, who joins us from one of the polling locations in Baltimore County. Amy. Lynn and Tim, well, we're here at Woodlawn Community Center, one of several polling locations here in Baltimore County, where we've seen a steady flow of voters make their way in and out of here throughout the morning. Now, at last check, officials here tell me they've counted at least over 400 votes here just at this location so far today. And voters have until 8 p.m. tonight to cast their ballots. Officials say they're expecting a high turnout today, so they're just asking for patience. It's the start of an election day, unlike any other in American history. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. Marylanders who did not vote early or by absentee <laughs> lined up this morning at polling locations before doors opened at 7 a.m., eager to cast the first in person ballots of the day. How long have you been waiting in line for? <laughs> James Glenn made sure he was the first person lined up outside the Woodlawn Community Center in Baltimore County with a message for the rest in line. All the people in line, you're here for a reason and not for a season. Many say they chose to vote in person this year because they felt it was a more secure option. I feel like if I'm here, I can see it go through. I can press the button. I can give them the ballot. And that just made me feel even better. Today marks the final opportunity for Marylanders to weigh in on races from the local level to the White House. Following a record breaking early voting period, election officials are expecting a high turnout throughout the day at its more than 300 voting centers open statewide. Just ask people to be patient as they're waiting to vote and for results. As far as when we can expect the official number of total votes tallied up, the State Board of Elections says it's unclear, but voters should expect delays. Normally, we are counting ballots for the next 10 days and normally would wrap up around November 13th. Um, with the volume of mail-in ballots that we have, it could be that it would take a little bit longer. And if you still have a mail-in ballot, don't worry, you still have time. Officials recommend it dropping it off at a ballot drop-off box by 8 p.m. tonight when polls close. Also, if you have yet to register to vote, you still have time to do so. If you make your way to the polls, you can do it in person. Just make sure you bring proof of residency. Live this afternoon, I'm Amy Kawada for WJZ. Thank you, Amy. And one of the biggest races we'll be watching in our area tonight is the race for Baltimore City Mayor. Our live team coverage continues. Annie Rose Ramos brings us the message from all three candidates as they make their final push. Annie Rose. That's right, guys. Voters are headed to polls across the city, and that's no exception here at Camden Yards. You can see the line stretches straight down the side of the stadium. Now, we checked in with all three mayoral candidates as they make one final push in their campaign for the city's mayor. Brandon Scott, the Democratic candidate for mayor, dropping his ballot into a drop box this morning at Forest Park High School. This is where my mom graduated high school. This is a big day for the city, a big day for me and my family as well. While the independent candidate Bob Wallace cast his ballot in Cherry Hill. The school right behind me, this is the middle school that I went to many, many years ago when I was a kid here in Cherry Hill. Both candidates showing their roots lie deep in Baltimore. I started here. Many years ago, and I'm, I'm ending here. The third candidate, Republican Pastor Shannon Wright, who says her platform is simple. Make our public schools work, make our streets safe, and bring jobs into the city that you can actually raise a family on. While Scott says his leadership experience is what sets him apart. You just have to remind people who's been here, who's been fighting for Baltimore City, who's lived in Baltimore City. Wallace says it's his expertise in business that makes him qualified. How do we build the economy of the city? Now all three of them, Republican, Independent, and Democrat, have only a few final hours to make one final push for mayor. And Lynn, back live now at the Camden Yards. You can see the line stretching straight down the side of the stadium, as I mentioned earlier. Now, just for those mayoral candidates, we know that Baltimore is a heavily Democratic city, but the Independent and the Republican candidates are both banking that Baltimoreans are ready to vote for someone new. Reporting live, I'm Annie Rose Ramos for WJZ.
Annie Rose, thank you. Seventh District Congressman Kwesi Mfume cast his ballot yesterday during early voting. The Democrat incumbent is facing off against Republican Kimberly Klasik in this high profile race. She tweeted over the weekend that she also voted early. Remember, WJZ is your election connection. We will have special election night coverage with Nora O'Donnell, Gail King, and John Dickerson, as well as local updates starting at 7 p.m.